Hello everyone and welcome to this channel. In today's video, we will see how to create ASP.NET Core Web API with Entity Framework Code. In this tutorial, I will be using Visual Studio 2022 Community Edition, Entity Framework Code 6.0 and above. I will be using SQL Server 2019 Community Edition. For this video, we will be using Entity Framework Code Database First Approach, where we will be using an existing SQL Server database to scaffold the required entities. There are two ways to scaffold the SQL Server database. First is the standard method reverse engineering where we use the package manager console in Visual Studio and execute the set of commands. Second is to use tools and extensions. As you can see here, there are a set of tools and app extensions that are available in, in Visual Studio to connect to the SQL database and scaffold the required entities. We will be using EF Core Power Tools in this tutorial. A little brief about Entity Framework Core. As most of you might know, Entity Framework Core is an ORM object relational mapping framework that helps us to represent a database into object oriented programming model in the .NET Core ecosystem, thus helping us to interact and perform crude operations on relational database without any hassle. Entity Framework Core brings a higher level of abstraction and helps in creating data oriented applications with less code in a much efficient way. So let's get started. First, we'll start by installing the EF Core Power Tools. For this, open the browser, search for EF Core Power Tools Marketplace. The first link would take you to the EF Core Power Tools website. This is an extension for Visual Studio. So download the extension. Once downloaded, double click the extension and follow the wizard to complete the installation. This will add an extension in Visual Studio. Next, I'll walk you through my data, uh, the SQL Server database. For this tutorial, I'll be using the ERP underscore database where I have two tables, employee and countries table. The employee table has uh, four columns, ID, first name, last name and email. We will be using EF Core Power Tools to connect to the SQL Server database and scaffold the employee table and generate entities in Visual Studio. Next, we will create ASP.NET Web API project in Visual Studio. So let's start Visual Studio, click on File, New, Project. Usually whenever I am doing projects, I start with a blank solution so that based on the type of project I want to do, whether it's an ASP.NET Web API project, ASP.NET project, web project or any core uh, console project, I can add the projects to the, solu to the blank solution. So I usually select blank solution and then next I give a name to the blank solution. In this case I will give ASP.NET Core. demo I give a name this and I'll click on create so the blank solution is created next we'll be creating ASP.NET Core Web API project for creating an ASP.NET Core Web API project right click on the solution click add new project select the ASP.NET Core Web API template in case you don't see the ASP.NET Core Web API template from the top down select Web API Select the ASP.NET Core Web API template, click on next, give a name to your project. And click next. On the additional information page, click the default settings. Here you can see we are using .NET 6.0 framework, so click on create. Once the project is created, do a quick test by running the project locally by pressing F5 or click on the run button. The project will build and once the application starts, the default browser will start and you will see the default AAPI Swagger documentation. 
here you are seeing the web forecast api get api you can try it out click on try it out button then click on execute and here you see the response data back so the api is working correctly and the api project is set up correctly note the web forecast project and the api is the default api provided by asp.net core web api template this is not created by us we need to create an employee endpoint so let's go back to the project stop the project and we will delete the web forecast dot cs and the web forecast controller so right click on the web forecast delete then web forecast controller delete next we will connect the sql server database using the ef core power tools to use the ef core power tools right click on the project select ef core power tools and select reverse engineer you will see i am already connected to my local sql server database remove that click on add database connection select sql server click continue it will ask me for the server name server name you can give, get it from your local data sql server database copy the name and paste it here once you paste the server name you will see the list of databases that are under this server select erp db in my case and test the connection and test connection is succeeded click ok keep the ef core 6 option selected by default and click ok this will pop up the database objects related to that database in my case there is only two tables countries and employee i don't have any views or stored procedures so the database objects window will show only the tables i'll select the employee table and click ok you will get the generate ef code model window here you can keep the default information and click ok or you can change change as per your requirement i'm changing the context name to employee context i'm keeping the namespace as it is the web api demo models is the folder you can change the name is the folder where the auto generated db context file and the employee entity file will be created i would recommend other two options realize or synchronize the generated object names check mark and then use table column name directly from the database these are optional if you select you will get the exact table name and the column names that you have defined in the database in in my case it's employee and the column names so then click on ok This will auto generate the db context and the entities under the models folder here you can see the employees entity and the employee context file the ef core power tools will additionally create one more file it's called power tools maintenance it has instructions to follow to connect the db context with the sql server So the first is register your data context in your program.cs file so copy this line open the program.cs paste it here save it Next, you need to add the connection string to your configuration file appsetting.deployment, appsetting.json, or secret.json. So, copy the connection string. Open the appsetting.json.
place to DM and save the file. So we have registered our data context class in our program.cs and we are connecting our db context with the connection string. Next we have the connection string set up here. We have added it to the app setting.json. So this completes the connectivity of the context files with the application. So let's so we'll close this file program.cs file, context file and the employee user. Now we'll create a new controller to represent the employees endpoint that will allow the get, post and delete operations to be done on the SQL Server database through Entity Framework Core. So before we add the controller, we need to add two NuGet packages to use in our controller. So for that, we go expand the dependencies folder on the packages right click on it manage new packages select the browse option and select microsoft dot framework select the microsoft dot entity framework core then select the latest option and click on install. Next you will select the Microsoft dot entity framework code dot SQL server. Select the option, select the latest stable version and click install. Here you can see we have installed Microsoft dot entity framework core package and Microsoft dot entity framework core dot SQL server package. So close the get package. Now we'll add the controller. To add the controller, right click on the controllers folder, click on add controller. By default, MVC is selected. But we are creating an API so select the API option and click on API controller dot empty click on add and add the controller name we are creating the employee controller so employee add. so the employee controller is created now we need to add the employee endpoints so first we need to add the reference to entity framework. Next we'll create a variable of the db context note i'm keeping this tutorial simple to explain the concept and how to cons consume the db context within the api controller you can additionally add repository pattern to abstract db interactions logic from the controller to a common place Constructor and we'll 
can check the employee contacts. Next, we'll create the get API. So the first thing is we'll add the attribute HTTP get. Here we are getting the connecting the contacts, employee contacts uh, and employees and getting the list of all the employees. If employees are not found here, then we are returning not found else we are returning okay. And the list of employees. Save the save the code. This you can do a build. And now the controller is ready to test the controller run the application the default browser will run And here you will see the Swagger documentation with the employee API. So this is the get get employee API. You can try it out. Click on execute. And here you get the list of employees as a response back. So you can see the same here. I click select the and this is the result. King Miyakocha. So we have successfully able to connect the SQL Server database using entity framework DB context and for this we have used the EF core tools similarly we can write the other endpoints for post post and delete Hope you will try this and let me know in comments if you have any difficulties in creating this tutorial. Thank you.